Hi everybody, my name is Rob Scott from UC Today and today we'll be discussing the future of customer experience. In this session, I'm joined by John Finch, AVP of Product Marketing and Customer Engagement at Ring Central. Welcome, John. Thank you, Rob. Nice to be here. Appreciate it. Oh, great to see you, John. Uh, John, before we get started, how about uh, a quick intro? Tell us about who you are and Ring Central, please. Yeah, so uh, I head up the product marketing organization for Ring Central's customer engagement portfolio. Um, and I've uh, been here for about three years now, been in the uh, telecommunications business uh, for most of my entire career. Um, I'm located here in San Francisco, and uh, Ring Central is, has a great portfolio of both business communications and, and customer service um, applications uh, in this product portfolio from uh, messaging, video, and phone systems, as well as inbound, outbound, and digital customer engagement portfolio. So as I mentioned before today, our discussion is around customer engagement or customer service, and we're going to talk a little bit about these uh, changes that we're seeing in the evolving landscape today with people working from home um, due to the global pandemic, as well as uh, the shift in, in customer engagement and, and the demands that um, you know, consumers have with brands and the different modes of communication that, you know, brands need to be thinking about as they interact with their customers. Thanks, John. And we've come a long way in the past decade to set the scene for our viewers. How has customer experience changed in your opinion? Well, you know, it, for lots of different reasons, right? Technology is one thing, um, sort of the generation of uh, using mobile devices, uh, you know, the proliferation of um, those mobile devices across different generations. And so now no one, no one is sort of immune to um, wanting to use the latest and greatest ways of communicating. So it really is kind of a shift in a couple of different things. It's the technology and it's also the rules in general customer experience have changed. So, you know, before it used to be really driven by what the brand wanted to set the stage of in terms of providing customer services around, around having specific company hours or, or hours of availability for customer service. It really was voice. There was some email. There was some web chat. It was primarily set up as like a reactive service um, so that if somebody had a problem, um, they would actually contact uh, the brand to get that resolved. It also was fragmented, meaning that organizations that were working customer service were sort of disconnected or siloed away from the rest of the organization. So solving specific problems that might be a little bit more complex were sometimes challenged. And it was service to many. So it wasn't personalized. It was sort of waiting in a queue, asking for questions sometimes uh, with the IVR system, and then re-asking those questions and getting security answers and things from, from an agent. And it really has changed, right? It's about being able to offer any kind of service from any device across any channel 24-7. It's about pre being proactive with your customers. It's reaching out to them, giving them choices, you know, letting them know sort of where they're at with their service at that certain brand or, you know, potential upsell opportunities, right? So there's a benefit for both the customer as well as the brand and really getting a full picture of the customer. So making it personalized and individualized and really kind of making it effortless as well. I think, you know, that's a, that's a term that, you know, in some cases, you know, really isn't really defined well. It really is about ensuring that the customer doesn't have to think about it. It really is about truly being effortless. Great stuff. So customers do expect more from businesses when they interact with them. What kinds of challenges are organizations facing when it comes to kind of meeting those, those new standards? Well, it's, it's complex, right? I mean, you've got brands with multiple tracks of communication. Um, so for example, typically customer service had been voice-based only, and, and that's great. I mean, it, it's, it's been around for as long as the telephone's been around in different capacities. Call centers and contact centers really kind of came of age you know, at a certain point in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, but they've evolved in terms of adding different levels of interaction. So once web chat came into play, uh, once email came into play, and now we've got, you know, messaging that would happen, um, you know, from an in-app device, we've got social media, um, we've got multiple agents all over the world, a lot of conglomerates have multiple brands, and so you start thinking about all these multiple touch points that are going on with inside of a company. How do you actually keep and bring all this stuff together to understand how your customers are impacted by the levels of service that you're providing? 
Because ultimately what you want to have is you want to have a high net promoter score. You want your brand to be able to provide the best quality, the best rated service possible in the industry. In many cases, it's a differentiator. I mean, you're dealing with a lot of millennials. You're dealing with a lot of younger folks even than the millennials that aren't brand um, loyal. They really are looking for the best quality of service, the best price, you know, something that, you know, is, is easy to interact with and, and gets the job done. And so you really have to be thinking about that. Um, so being able to bring it together by utilizing the cloud and sort of thinking through the strategy that you're going to have and utilizing and leveraging a platform that sort of brings everything together into one. And so you think about that, bringing everything together into one, it means a couple of different things. Just like I said before, it was really around it's all about customer service. It's all about bringing those types of interactions and putting them into maybe sort of a universal queue or sets of queues that are most relevant for that specific type of interaction or mode of communication that's coming through. But it's also allowing those agents to have collaboration and communication across the rest of their organization that becomes key to this as well. So it really is about them solving problems, them escalating agents, when I say them, agents escalating an interaction um, through a, a chat group or messaging group um, that they would have a team messaging group or digging into that messaging group and seeing that there's documents that can help them resolve that customer issue quicker, transferring, transferring that interaction to billing, you know, escalating it to a video call versus just a, a voice call, for example, or just a text messaging call, bringing on more people um, from different areas of technical support to help solve that problem immediately and, and be able, able to use video and, and pictures to, to look at what the problem is. So being able to kind of handle all of those modes of communication, bring other people in that might need to be involved in solving that specific customer problem into one communication mode really is the power that, that folks are looking for. It really kind of simplifies the way the business is approaching customer communications. Great stuff. So bringing all those channels together, I mean, that, that, that does sound like the whole, ultimately the whole holy grail for a lot of organizations to, to, to kind of get rid of those silos. And if they are running voice or have got, they've got an appetite for more than just voice in their call center. Um, it, as a technology vendor, is Ring Central able to kind of bring those uh, channels all together into a single platform? Yes, yes, we are. Um, and, and that's the beauty of it, right? So I, I think what, what most, most folks have heard about is the word omnichannel. And so being able to bring omnichannel interactions into one single platform for reporting, quality of service, um, reliability, all of the, the sort of things that are necessary to kind of bring, bring it into one purview. But I think we're Ring Central is different is it really is a single platform to man manage every interaction. So if it's messaging, social, live chat, reviews, email, um, mobile app, you know, or even other things that would come of age as time goes on, being able to take those in voice, of course, as well, and being able to take those and bring those together into one so that agents across the organization in different work groups. So if you're a voice specific agent, or you're a digital specific agent, or you're working in a different arm of the organization, you're gonna get the calls that are most pertinent to you where you can solve those. And that one single platform is gonna be able to route those uh, specifically to you and also provide that level of interaction that's necessary. So that means there's a quality and individualized sort of experience that comes to the consumer. And if you come in in one channel, like messaging or social, you have a problem, you get it resolved, and you call in maybe several weeks later, that agent that handled all that interaction with you digitally may be a different agent, but they're gonna know that that interaction happened. So being able to take that information and centralize it in a CRM system and being able to dip into that as a call or an interaction is being queued up for an agent is also critical in that mean. Great, and with Organizations kind of rapidly now adopting cloud contact center technology. Are we entering kind of a, a, an era of, of true omnichannel, do you think? Because we've been talking about omnichannel for a lot of years. Yeah, yeah, I think we are. And I think it's, it's really about the cloud. I think there's a couple of things that are going on right now, which are key, right? Is the cloud really su supplies the ability for um, flexibility and um, also scalability. And I think what you've seen over the last you know, couple of decades really is 
the cloud becoming more and more prevalent. So um, it has levels of flexibility to integrate easier. In today's environment where most of us are working at home, um, I could be a contact center agent and you could be a customer and you can contact me and I can physically work at home. I don't need to bring a desk phone with me. I don't need to be sitting in an office or a call center. I can be managed by my supervisor. I can still have all the interactions that are required of my brand that I'm working for to be able to handle those unique needs in the same way that I would if I was sitting in the call center. So in today's landscape that we're, we're working in, sort of the cloud is that answer. And when it becomes the omni-channel, yeah, I think the omni-channel component is key. And, and, and you know, in different, different variations of what was omni-channel, they were typically voice-centric. Um, the routing of the calls were, were, were uh, programmatically, um, you know, put together, meaning that, you know, calls would be routed based on specific campaigns or programs or class of customer and all sorts of things. And then you'd have different cues or same methodologies, but different cues for email. And, you know, there's, there's a delay in that, but those wouldn't be centralized. And, you know, then they'd be bolted on. And then there would be an addition for web chat, which may be a totally different agent. And then that wouldn't be centralized. So typically these things were kind of pieced together over time as the technology became more important and customers were demanding it of, of those vendors that were out there managing that. And I think, where Ring Central comes into play is we're sort of building this um, natively so that everything that is a channel, no matter which channel it is, is truly omni-channel, um, meaning that each of those interactions uh, can be handled equally um, from the same platform. So where you're taking all this information and it's supporting, let's say, the 20 plus digital channels plus the voice channel that we're offering today, um, will all kind of be aggregated into one simplistic view for the organization and sort of treated equally as they're routed across that organization. So SLAs and different levels that and KPIs that the organization is measuring on its customer success, you know, will be able to be isolated, tracked, and uh, managed appropriately, kind of in a more singularly um, you know native view. Thanks, John. And we can't have a, a future of customer experience conversation without talking about AI. You know, where are we with AI? It's 2020. I mean, we are in the middle of the pandemic as, as we're talking, but uh, <laughs> how's AI coming along? Is it truly a reality for uh, contact centers? Do you have to be in the cloud to get it? You know, in most cases you do. I mean, there are solutions that are out there that you know, would provide artificial intelligence. Um, but in speaking to, to Ring Central's customer engagement portfolio specifically, I think, you know, the one thing that we have for us is AI is really at the core. It's at the core of the classification of modern customer engagement, really. It's, it's being able to take and route and classify and even make recommendations um, to agents and to customers in real time. So in, in many different ways, in order to really offer 24-7 service um, in the same facet that we would offer voice 24-7 service, there is the component of being able to triage the calls that they come in. So in the past, it typically was via an IVR. So you go through an IVR tree, your call will get routed to the right agent. It might be an outsourced agent. It could be someone you know, local um, based on time zones. Or it could be, you know, an intelligent um, IVR platform that allows you to get for banking, for example, get your balance or, or make a transfer. Um, and so that was kind of the generation one with an IVR. The generation two is really chatbots, right? So if you're classifying and having um, an interaction, if your voice obviously would be a very similar sort of interaction you'd have with an IVR, but the chatbot in a digital environment is also key, being able to kind of respond to the individual, dip into the knowledge base, provide the level of support that almost seems like you're dealing with a real agent or a live agent. When the challenge um, or there is a limit on what a, a chatbot can actually offer to a customer, and so those limitations are identified, then it's going to pass that to a live agent that will then interact with that, that customer. So, um, and it will also make recommendations to the agent. It will also give them the history of where the interaction left off. And will also, you know, provide those recommendations to the agent to kind of potentially close out um, and assist the customer fully. So, you know, artificial intelligence in summary is really kind of at the, car, the core of this from a routing and classification and recommendation across all these channels. 
Um, and then it brings it together even further by allowing for the integration of intelligent virtual assistants or chatbots um, to sort of isolate and triage and enable organizations or brands to offer that 24 seven level of service. I'm hearing a lot about video and collaboration coming into the contact center space. So what, what should CX leaders look out for in the future or today even, but uh, what, what would you say are the kind of you know, big things happening in our space right now? Well, I mean, we've talked about video quite a bit in the contact center as well. And I, 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 for those of us that have been in this space for a while, it sort of is on again, off again. Um, and I think it really comes down to today, video is key, right? So even this work from home environment we're in, video is a necessity for us. We're used to working with people in real time. We have the capacity, we have the capability, we have the technology, um, and it's sort of grown up with us to be able to offer that. And I think in our daily working world and then in the consumer world with things like FaceTime, for example, you're able to communicate with your friends in, in a video sort of way. So I think we're gonna see more and more of that as time goes on. Um, from a customer service perspective. One of the things that Ring Central has in its core product offering, which is message, video, and phone, it really is the video component, right? So being able to bring uh, a customer service agent on with a customer and even other individuals that may be necessary, kind of allowing that to happen organically within that interaction, I think is key. So is someone gonna call into the contact center today with a video call and get to an agent? The answer is no. But where there's an escalation need to get to video, that can naturally happen during that interaction. So let's say you're contacting me and you call in and we're having an interaction. I can actually invite you to a video call and we can just launch our interaction to a video call and I can see what your needs are and we can kind of walk through and do a, a, a technical deep dive, for example, or help you fix your dishwasher. Um, and the same thing would be if I needed to bridge on more people to sort of help from a technical front to kind of get that interaction closed. So we're going to see more and more of that. Will we get to a point where there will be video call right into the contact center? I believe so. Will we see it in the next few years? Yes, definitely. So I, I think that the technology, again, is there. I think the, the capability is there. I think it's just, um, it's, it's inevitable for us to be able to provide that. And it's a core element of, of sort of our plans as we move forward. Hey, John, it's been great talking to you today. Some great insights for the audience to take away. Thank you for your thanks. time. Thanks, Rob. It was a pleasure to be here. My pleasure. Hey, thanks for everyone for watching. If you've enjoyed today's session, we'd really appreciate a like or a share. See you again soon.